Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about cyber security. Specifically, I'm going to discuss what we can all do to protect our online accounts, including the use of hardware security keys. Today, many online accounts are only protected by passwords. Security experts generally agree that passwords are not that secure and will increasingly be supplemented or replaced by other authentication methods. Indeed, in September 2021, Microsoft announced that the passwordless future had arrived. Most of this video will focus on authentication methods that can be used in addition to or in place of a password. Even so, it's still worth noting some basic password advice. Firstly, assume that somebody is always trying to guess your password or to discover it using a brute force attack in which they attempt all possible character combinations. You should therefore make all passwords as long as possible, ideally a good 12 characters or more, as well as including a mix of upper and lowercase letters, numbers and punctuation symbols. Ideally, don't include real words in a password and never include words that are related to the user or which could be guessed by looking at their social media accounts. Also, always use different passwords for different accounts, so that if one account is compromised, everything is not lost. Admittedly, remembering lots of passwords can be difficult, so either use a password manager or, if you don't trust password managers, store your passwords in an encrypted document or on an encrypted device. Personally, I store passwords on encrypted USB drives, as I've discussed in previous videos. Finally, it's worth noting that whilst for years standard advice was to change passwords regularly, today this is no longer the case. In part, such advice was given when it was hard to check if somebody else had accessed your account. But today, it's easy to review sign-in activity and logged-in devices, and indeed, we should all do this on a regular basis, such as once a week. Reflecting this, in 2019, Microsoft dropped its policies for regular password changes. As they noted, periodic password expiration is an ancient and obsolete mitigation of very low value. As they further explained, if a password is never stolen, there's no need to expire it. And if you have evidence that a password has been stolen, you would presumably act immediately rather than wait for expiration to fix the problem. In general, there are three ways to prove your identity when accessing an online account. These are something you privately know, something you possess, and a unique characteristic of your body known as a biometric. Today, things you privately know include passwords, one-off codes sent by SMS text or email messages, and emergency backup codes. Things you possess include phones with built-in security keys, mobile devices installed with authenticator apps or which receive verification prompts, other computers with a trusted status, and standalone security keys, also known as hardware authentication devices. Finally, the most common biometrics are fingerprints, face recognition, voice prints and iris scans. If you want to protect an online account, it should be set up so that two of these factors are required to gain access. This provides two-step verification, also known as two-factor authentication, which in turn is a form of multi-factor authentication. In this video, I'm going to stick with the name two-step verification or 2SV, not least because it's the most technically accurate, as well as being the term used by Google and Microsoft. Two-step verification is offered by all major email and other cloud service and social media providers, including Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, and Twitter. Usually, you turn it on by accessing your account, and then a menu called something like Login and Security, where there'll be some two-step verification settings. Activating two-step verification significantly increases security and indeed from November 2021, YouTube requires all monetizing channels to have it enabled. However, 
Not all second step verification methods are equally secure, with increasing reports of code sent by text or email being intercepted. Or you could fall victim to a SIM swap attack in which your cell phone number is hijacked. For this reason, it's better to use an authenticator app or mobile device prompts rather than text or email codes as your second step verification method. And if you really want to secure your online account, you should consider hardware security keys. Security keys, also known as hardware authentication devices, provide the highest level of login verification available to most users. Several companies sell them, including Google, who have a range called Titan, and Ubico, who are one of the largest manufacturers. Different models come with USB Type-A, USB Type-C, and or a wireless NFC interface, with prices starting at about $30 or £30. Here we have my security keys, which are YubiKey 5C models from YubiCo. As you can see, they've got a USB-C interface, but I use these with one of these plugged on the end, which is a USB Type-C to Type-A adapter. So I plug that on there, and the reason I do that is because this gives me a security key with a full robust Type-A connector, which you don't tend to get on security keys when you buy them, and it also means I've protected the USB-C port. So if anything gets damaged when this is in my pocket or elsewhere, the thing that gets damaged is an adapter I can replace for a few pounds or dollars rather than the far more expensive UB key. Security keys are also included in many modern smartphones, and specifically those running Android 7 or above and iOS 10 or above. Security keys in phones can be used both on the device itself and via Bluetooth or an authenticator app when you need to log into an account on another computer. Security keys can also be used in several different ways, as either the only method used to access an account, or ideally as a second factor in two-step verification. It's normal to have two keys, one of which serves as a backup. And when you have a set of keys, you can use them on as many different accounts as you like. Keys from Ubico, Google and all other major suppliers will work with all common browsers in Windows or Mac OS, although some messing about is required to set things up in Linux, and I'll provide a link in the video description. To give you an example of security keys in action, let's set mine up for two-step verification in Twitter. To do this, we need to go to Security and Account Access, and then into the options for two-factor authentication, which is currently set to use codes sent by text message. So here, I'll check the security key box, after which I'll need to verify my identity. Next, we need to press Start, after which a message comes up for adding the security key. This is rapidly followed by a similar message from my browser, and I just need to insert the key into the computer, after which I'll be prompted to touch the contact on its side. Finally, we give the key a name, and I call the first of mine YubiKey1, and Twitter now says that we're all set. It also displays a one-off code that we can use to log in if we ever lose our key, and which we can make a note of if we wish, before we click on Got It. To check all is well, I'll next go to Manage Security Keys, where YubiKey1 is now listed, and where we can add another in the same manner. Only this time, of course, I'll call it YubiKey2. And there we are, everything is set up, and next time I log into Twitter, I'll do so by entering my password and then inserting and touching a security key. So, we've added security keys as our two-step verification method here in Twitter, and this must mean our account is now more secure. Well, sadly, this may not be the case, as any account is only as secure as its weakest second factor verification method. And so to make things really secure here in Twitter, having added in security keys, we need to remove text-based verification so that it's never offered as an alternative. 
And if this makes you nervous, as we saw earlier, most accounts allow you to generate one or more backup codes that you can store in a safe place, such as on an encrypted USB drive, just in case you ever lose access to both of your security keys. It's also worth noting that if you use a Google account with two security keys, one of which could be phone-based, you can join Google's advanced protection program. This is free and makes your account very secure indeed. Setup is very straightforward, and once you are enrolled, you have to log in using a security key as your second factor. Many apps that rely on accessing a Google account will also not work once you're in the advanced protection program, and in the event of a problem, account recovery will take many days. However, in security terms, all of these restrictions are a very good thing, but do reflect on them before you enrol. If and when you do take the plunge into Google's pool of heightened security, you'll be signed out on all devices. But this just gives you practice logging in again using a security key as your second step verification method. The security measures I've discussed in this video should help to protect online accounts. But I'll close with two additional tips. Firstly, in some accounts, you can specify a recovery email address. And if you do so, make sure that recovery email address is just as secure as the rest of the account. For example, with two-step verification added so that the recovery email address doesn't become a backdoor into the rest of the account. Secondly, do make sure that any computers on which you stay logged into accounts are secure. So if they fall into the wrong hands, for example, if somebody steals your laptop, they can't get into your account simply by booting the machine up or entering an obvious and very easy to guess password. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.